technology new delhi india on the topic emerging technology possible mi you will learn how to in- effectively in- incorporate management information systems so hang in and we'll be right back <laughs> We'll now proceed to the next segment of the program. Dr. Gaurav Gupta, Scientist E, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, New Delhi, India, will deliver a keynote speech on the topic Emerging Technology, Possible MIS. Sir completed his PhD at the Department of CSE, Jadavpur University, Kolkata, on the topic 30 on digital forensics for detection of computer frauds and cyber crimes, and received his formal doctoral degree in 2009. He has 18 years of expertise in the field of digital forensics and is presently employed by the Ministry of Electronics and Telecommunication Information Technology as a scientist E, additional director of cyber law and e-security. He has conducted research on the development of scalable and effective system of detection of computer hazards and environment to go over the keynote. So, can we test your audio video please? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, present. Okay. Sprites has been fine. Thank you. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm really grateful and thankful to the organizers to give me opportunity uh, where I can, you know, share my experience and, you know, I can talk about this uh, very important topic, which I think uh, is being discussed from last two days. And uh, you must be knowing a lot about how AI is impacting our life. Uh, and, you know, I will today discuss uh, something which is much more simpler. Uh, you know, how this emerging technology, including AI, is being misused because we have seen a lot of use cases. We are skeptical about what can go wrong. But then I will be talking about, you know, there are so many simple ways these things are being misused, which nobody can result into cybercrime. And I will also, you know, take you through where I highlight, you know, what are the small, small uh, you know, problem statements which are there when I'm talking about cybercrime, which can be taken up by people to develop solutions, which can be taken up by students to do, you know, internship or, you know, or uh, thesis or class projects and so on. So I will be talking about all those things uh, also when I'm discussing this. Um, I'm also, uh, uh, you know, happy to inform that, you know, I will be taking some interns and I will be happy to guide some of the students for their B.Tech and master's project if required. So if anybody is looking for guidance, you know, how to solve and how to do research in the area of computer frauds and cyber crime detection and digital forensics, that is something, uh, you know, I would be happy to find. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, the very first thing which I will, you know, I will need somebody to, you know, talk to me and help uh, in terms of answering some of the questions. So my first question is based on, you know, so far, whatever you have heard, can you tell me, are these it's okay to visit, is there any, which one is fine, which one is not fine, anyone? Can somebody tell me? Maybe you can type on chat and the host can read it for me, what the people are saying. Do you think all of these are fine? Not fine? Yes, please. I'm awaiting your answer. Okay, so, you know, I will wait for a few more seconds before you answer, otherwise I will give you the answer, right? So according to me, not all of them are fine, but not all of them are also wrong. You know, some of the websites are okay, some of them are not okay. Right, so the first one, ozone.ru is like a flip card of Russia. You know, it's a genuine website. It has no issues if you go to this site, and probably if you're in Russia, you can do shopping. 
But the second one is problematic. It says it's not yahoo.com. It is yah00.com. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. So I'm very sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so I wanted to convey that we can't unmute uh, the participants because okay. that will cause cause chaos. Fine, fine, fine. And uh, they are writing their answers in the chat box, sir. You can access it. Ah, uh, okay. Can you help me with the chat box answers because you know I have full screen on my computer right now. Ah, uh, right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. What are the issues with third, fourth, and fifth? But people have written. So SB 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 one dot com is an inappropriate. It's coming from Roshni Ali. Jayawardhan Golap is saying no, sir. They are inappropriate. Ayush Kumar also is saying all are wrong websites. So not all are wrong. The first one is okay. What is the issue with the fourth one? Anyone who is typed. Ong C. Uh, there are numeric values introduced in them. Okay, so now the fourth one actually is O G N C. The N and G has been replaced, you know, interchanged, and that's where this is wrong. When while reading, we read it like O N G C, but then out of all these, only the first one is right. Rest we are use the cr criminal is trying to use zero instead of O, one instead of I, and so on. So you know, I will explain why this is happening going forward. So my. Uh, important question which i want to ask is can you tell me as an audience what makes cyber crime possible for criminals what is the reason that cyber crimes can happen so the answer is it's us we, the cyber users make it possible because we are not aware because you know we are not careful we are not you know giving enough attention to the things which can go wrong and that is where cyber crimes happen also one more reason is convergence of technologies we are seeing that you know lot of technologies are converging together and that is basically to provide you convenience for example long long back you were going on holiday with multiple electronic devices right you were carrying a uh, digital camera a handy cam and so on you were taking many devices together you were having digital diary you were having a music device like a walkman but today all of that has converged to one single piece your mobile phone so this convergence is making life complex because technology changes fast once upon a time people were changing their phones in years but today they are changing in months you know every year new iphone comes it comes with new features new sensors so this rapid speed of change of technology is also one reason because of which cyber crimes are increasing and then rapid change of technology includes your ai it includes all the emerging technologies like new kind of sensors which are coming it includes uh, you know data which you can put on cloud and so on so all these factors enable criminals to do more crime so i am seeing that you know more number of people who are trying to misuse technology are increasing compared to people who are using it for their benefit because the people who want to use it for benefit they don't care about what can go wrong and in this carelessness in this lack of awareness the problem increases and more crimes happen and i will discuss that with examples also you know the previous discussion uh, which was going on you know i was part of that and you know i heard that people were talking about you know technology playing a role but then you know humans are not technological right humans also rely on their emotions and these emotions are the reasons which differentiate a human from a machine because humans have emotions machines don't have emotions and these emotions are the reason because of which a lot of crimes are again happening and they are the reasons where around which we can actually develop new pro new solutions around which we can develop technologies which can help use our emotions in the right way so you know some of the examples are like uh, we have trust as emotion greed as an emotion panic fear of missing out threat disruption it's like you know we get call from the bank saying uh, your, your account will be disabled do the kyc and so on you know all these must have heard Uh, winning lotteries, inheriting lot of money, you know, see, such crimes are happening from last one decade. But then new forms of crimes are coming today, right? You know, uh, uh, criminals threaten you that your account will be blocked immediately. They will tell you that some offer which is going to expire. It's because they don't want you to give time to think, to consult somebody, to figure out that something is wrong. So there are websites which offer you an expired account to order the thing. This product comes, right? then all these deals are basically time bound deals so they give you threat you know so if i ask ask you uh, 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 my audience that you know can you tell me what your first step if you lose your mobile phone 
What will you do in next five minutes? What is the first thing? When you type in chat and somebody my phone into a new phone of mine, and then I will call one of my known person from this mobile phone and send him now, so that when my, the phone rings to my friend, which is just with me, I will know what is the number which is being flashed because I don't know your number. So now I'm using your SIM in my phone to call a person so that I know your number. Now what I know is I know your number. I have your SIM in my phone. I will install WhatsApp. Put your number, an SMS will come for authentication, and now your WhatsApp is installed on my phone. Your SIM has numbers. I will start sending out to uh, a message, a WhatsApp message to all these numbers which are there in your SIM, saying this person has got uh, uh, met with an accident. He is in hospital. Five lakh rupees are required for surgery, and so on. I can do it in the next two minutes as soon as I get your phone. It takes only two minutes to do this, right? So if you are doing any other activity, it will not stop me from doing this. I will also give a count number of mine where people will probably, you know, I will ask for money that this is the phone number or the Paytm number or a phone pay number where you should send the money. So the idea is, whenever we are talking about cyber security or cyber crime investigation or digital forensics, we must also think how criminals think. What will they do? Most of the time, what we do probably is not the right step or the first right step. It might be the right step, but that may not, that should not be the first step. And that is where all the frauds are happening, and we are not able to predict frauds, right? Right. So let me ask you one more question: uh, Where do you put your car keys when you come back home? Where do you put your car keys? I'm assuming you put it in a key holder. So my question is: Where is the key holder in your house? You come back home, you put your car keys in key holder. Where is the key holder? Please type in chat box. It's near to the door most of the time. So what happens is most people have their car key holder near to the door. And today modern car keys are coming with where they are continuously transmitting signal because you know whenever they are near to the car, car door automatically happens because we want convenience. We want we don't even want to press button of the remote of the car key, uh, you know, key fob, right? So there are technologies where they are continuously transmitting. Now there are frauds which are happening where. People come together with a walking kind of device which can receive and transmit signal. They will put one one of them will put this device near to your door and try to search for the signal. Other one will stand near to the car, and you know in some cases the signal is transmitted through this device and car is opened and car is taken away. Right. So the idea is designing is also important. We are designing solutions for convenience, but we are not using them effectively. We have uh, you know uh, credit cards which are uh, uh, which work on NFC based. Communication, right? Near field communication. So, if you are not keeping your card safe in a particular case, which stops from signal being transmitted, people can swipe for your cards while you are traveling, right? It is in a wallet, and I can have a POS machine. I can put two thousand rupees or five thousand rupees as amount, and I can bring that POS device near to your wallet uh, in a crowded metro train or something like that, right? So, so we need to know all criminals can do according to so that is where you know i'm going to discuss things so what happens is criminals are exploiting emotions through stories they will give you a story targeting against your emotion and they will use it for a while but after a while they will change the story right so our emotions which are being exploited remain the same only the stories change because they know now the story is known to many people let's move on to new story and they are using technology so that, for example they are morphing images they are making videos they are uh, imitating sound and voice is we are making us, you know, aankho dekhi in today's world may also be fabricated. Using AI, people can have very realistic synthetic audios, videos, and images. So we can't actually believe what we see by our eyes today, what we hear by our ears today. We need to probably think and you know, and take everything with a pinch of salt today, uh, assuming that technology might have been used to probably fabricate these things, to synthetically generate these things, and that is something which I think we should know. To safeguard against cyber crime, and then we should develop solutions against these kind of techniques, right? So most of the time we are treating symptoms rather than the root cause, and root cause is most important. And in this case, what helps us is Locard's principle. So what does Locard's principle say? It says that every contact leaves a trace, which means whatever they are doing, including criminals, what they are doing in the cyber world, they are leaving some digital traces. Those digital traces may or may not be quantifiable. 
So what may happen is we may not have technology today or a solution today which can quantify these changes in terms of evidences, but tomorrow it may happen. So the idea is, for example, let's say if I'm printing a counterfeit note or a counterfeit degree or a counterfeit uh, driving license. I don't have a license. I took my friend's license, scanned it, changed the photograph, changed the name and printed it using color printer. Now I can laminate it. It becomes my driving license. Now to check this authenticity, somebody has to go to RTO. Is there any other way? Yes, there is another way because this document has been printed by a printer, whereas a conventional driving license comes from an offset printing machine, right? This is a completely computer printout. So you can develop solutions. So as per Locard's principle, it says every contact leaves a trace, which means the paper has come in contact with printer. That means there are printer defects, printer noise, which will be there on the paper, which otherwise will not be there if it has been done through an offset machine. So if you can develop a solution which can take a photograph of a license and can differentiate between the noise of an offset printing machine versus noise of a printer, you can actually have a image processing based solution which can differentiate between counterfeit license and a genuine license instantly only by taking a photograph without going to an RTO. So that is where like, you know, in this particular case, using Locard's principle, using computer science techniques like image processing, there is a solution which can be developed. Right. So Locard principle is the most important principle when we are talking about computer frauds and cybercrime investigation and development of a solution because it gives us the starting point. For example, if a, if a photograph has been taken and uploaded uh, and I want to know who has done it. Now what happens is when a photograph is being taken, it is being taken by a camera or a mobile camera or a digital camera. Each camera has a sensor. So what happens is the light falls onto the lens and then converts on the sensor and then the sensor makes the final image, which is your JPEG image or whatever image you are making. Now what happens is the sensor has some defects which are peculiar and unique to each piece. Now any photograph which has been posted on social media, even though it might have been processed or, you know, converted into various other formats or compressed, those noises and defects specific to that camera persist. So if you can develop and find out what are those defects which are specific to a camera and you have a list of suspect that these 10 people with these 10 phones can we find out who has clicked this photograph out of these 10 people using this Locard's principle that every contact leaves a trace, which means every picture which has been shot has some defects of the camera from which it has come. So if you use this principle and you apply digital signal processing onto that image, you can always find out which camera has been used, what kind of camera has been used by these defects, by leveraging these defects. So Locard principle is a very useful thing uh, when we are talking about developing solutions for uh, digital forensics as well as computer frauds and cybercrime investigation. Right. So as you might have seen so far, you know, criminals are very, very creative and they are lazy also. They you develop a technique, they start using this technique until it becomes obsolete and people, most people know about it. And that is what we need to, you know, understand that we need to understand and think what criminals will do in this particular case, what could be their modus operandi. Then we should using Locard's principle and other computer science and electronic principles develop a solution which can find out potential evidences and that will help you know cut down on crime that will help investigate uh, these crimes that will help judiciary you know take rightful action against the criminals that is something which we need right so i can give you hundreds of examples of creativity for example um, uh, criminals mine social media what they do is uh, let's say if you're posting your photographs on online, right? I'm assuming is there anybody who does not post photograph on social media? Right yes or no in chat box? Do you post photographs in social media? Question is this. Do you post? Yes, you post. Most of the people post photograph. Now you know what, what goes along with your photograph? When you post a photograph, it is not only the photograph which is going into the social media, also the metadata of the photograph, like what is the resolution? What is the GPS location? What is the timestamp? What kind of phone it has used? What is the resolution? What is the focal length? And you know, all these information about the photograph is also embedded into the photograph as the metadata or the exit data. Now, if I get, let's say, two photographs of yours, eating home cooked food and going to Goa for a uh, holiday, these two photographs tell me that your home is open for robbery. You are not at home. You are going to Goa. And the first photograph has given me the GPS location of your house. I can safely go and do a robbery. It will also tell me that if you're going to Goa today, let's say you're posting, I'm right now at international airport going to Goa, which means I know what are the flights. I can search on Google. What are the flights in next two hours, three hours or four hours. 
and I can find out the common time of those flights when they are in air, which means your phone will not be working. I will try to do all banking related fraud against you because your phone number is not working at that point of time. You will not get SMSs. So that is how criminals are mining information from social media and doing things. You know, internet and gaming addiction. You know, these companies they want you to be uh, you know hooked on to the machines and the screens. Reason is more time you will spend on screen, more money they will make through advertisements. So their parameter to tell advertisers that how much time you are spending on their platform, and that is what dictates how much money they are going to make. Right. So internet and gaming addiction is becoming big. Reason is these companies are designing all these things in a manner so that people cannot leave their screen. They onto it, and that impacts your mental and physical well-being. So when we talk about AI, if AI is developing solutions which makes you hooked onto the system. That effectively ruins your physical and mental health. So that is something we need to understand. We need to probably think about digital detox. We should make a schedule when we are away from our digital devices. Can you control your urge to not check your phone's notification? That is something we should develop. You should always put your phone one hour or two hours or few hours on uh, you know in a no notification mode. Or if the notification come, don't check it for a while. That is something which will help your mental well-being. Right, free. Everything is free today, right? They give you free accounts, free access, and so on, right? You get uh, free internet. You get uh, uh, at times free USBs. You're let's say in a parking lot near to your car. Let's say if you are coming from a shopping mall, and when you are about to get into your car near to your uh, driver's door, there are a couple of pen drives lying. Which will you pick up? Will you check them who they are and return them? What will you do? So, question is: Will you pick up and plug them into your computer or not? To finding out to whom to return. So you will just let it be there. Nobody will pick it up, right? So I'm sure that last two days have impact on you. You have understood that things can go wrong. But what happens is many people who are not educated or you know not technologically, uh, not technologically very sound. Let's say businessman or a housewife or a Or a commerce student who is not from cybersecurity area, you know, they tend to pick up devices at times with good intention. Reason is they want to find out whose device is this. Once they plug in, you know, it get it impacts uh, your devices. Okay, tell me. Let's say if you are going to Goa and airport, your phone runs out of battery. Will you charge it at those kiosks like uh, Airtel provides and some other companies provide, which has multiple wires coming out? Will you charge your phone? Because there is no battery, right? And there are no sockets. Typically, at airport, there are no sockets where you can put your charger in. So, ideally, pe some people charge. So, if you have to at all charge, you know what you should do is, it's not that you know you should not do anything. That's it. If you are not, if you are not uh, using internet, if you are not using net banking, it will not make your life easy. So, idea is find out safeguards. For example, if I have to charge my phone, I charge my power bank first, and from that power bank, I charge my phone. Even if I am not having a power bank, what I do is I put my phone in switch off mode and then charge. It's not that you can't use things; you have to apply your mind and use things smartly so that your devices do not get hacked or infected. But you can still use the things. I listed down a website. This person does not exist. dot com. This is a website which generates AI based, GAN based software, uh, you know, images which are of not the real persons. So it has learned from one million faces, and now it is generating random faces after learning, which are of not of the real people on the earth. These are coming; they are being generated by a GAN, and they are random images. Now, what people do is the criminals they download these images and they make profile in their name, and then misuse it, right? So people have developed robotic arms for doing signatures because if I print the signature, printer remnants are available in the images to be extracted, which people can find out. Now what people are doing is they are developing robotic arms. They are taking your five or ten signatures, giving this to a program which is learning how you sign. Now they are giving a pen in the hand of a robotic arm. Now this program is dictating this robotic arm to sign like you using pen. They are very difficult to detect because the pen signature on the bank check is now yours with the pen being done, learned by your signature. And how do you detect it? This is a problem statement for you know research. Right, privacy violation. You have seen already many examples during last two days about how privacy is also being violated. So you know, social media is being used because it is helping us uh, bring people who are distant to close to us. 
but it is also being you know it is creating distance between people who are close to us physically you know we need to meet friends often rather we are only talking to them on phone or social media so it is again bad for our mental and physical well being and that's a, something which i thought i'll highlight right now type in chat box but what can you see on the screen is it a modern art or blocks what is it please type on chat box what can you see on the screen can you see something it's a puzzle pixels puzzles what else can you see left coded puzzle okay so let's assume you can not see something here let me put lines here i put some lines and now assume this as l this as i this as f this as t in white can you see left can you now see left most of you who were not able to see left earlier can see it right even though i remove lines now i have gone to the previous state but you can still see it the reason is once your mind knows what you can what, what is there what to look for it can find it out right so without lines also now you can see earlier you were not able to see similarly when i talk about computer frauds and cyber crime if you know how a criminal is doing a crime if i tell you the story of how he did it then later on if somebody is trying to do that fraud to you you will not fall for it and that is what my objective is today is talk that i will tell you from researchers perspective as well as from awareness perspective what are the problems which are there which using which cyber crimes are happening and what can you do about it? right so i have also written a book uh, cyber unsafe uh, with my younger sister and this, this contains non technical solutions it contains a lot of problem statements also so there are stories which tells you you know uh, uh, about how cyber crimes are happening what are the myths people have about technology what can you do about solving these crimes it also gives you research ideas it also gives you problem statements which can be taken as technical problems to solve and for a common user it tells how to avoid these crimes in a non technological manner for example let me give you one example let's say you come to meet me and you have to give me money let's say you have to give me 10000 rupees cash i am not accepting any other form what will you do you are visiting me in my office you have to pay me 10000 rupees i only want cash you are not carrying that much cash what will you do look for an atm let's you go out south my office and atm you will put your card in you will put your pin and the machine will say no cash you will go to another machine put your card put your pin it will give you money you will come back and give me the money right right i am only interested in cash no online transaction let's assume that so what happens is you know what might have gone wrong let's say you get a message in the night that your somebody has withdrawn money from your account now think how costly is an atm machine atm machine how much is the atm machine cost please guess what do you think how costly an atm machine is it's not very costly you can buy an atm machine in 4 5 lakh rupees right so what has happened is this is a known case one person bought an atm machine painted like sdfc sdfc and all that thing he took up this machine in the night 11 o'clock and put it outside a training institute where you know every day new people used to come and train or or a bus stop right or or somewhere nobody questions why this machine is here nobody verifies now people came they put their card machine recorded the card information people put their pin it recorded the corresponding pin and said no cash right in the night in the whole day 100 people used it it machine kept saying so in the night he came back took back the machine connected to the computer downloaded all the data now he wrote 100 new cards with this card data and he already has a pin list he went to the atm street and started withdrawing money from each account let's assume 40000 is the limit for each account Can you tell me how much money can he withdraw? He got hundred card information. So forty thousand is the limit for each card. He reproduced all hundred cards. How much money can he withdraw? Simple mathematical question. Not forty lakhs. He withdrew eighty lakhs because he withdraw started withdrawing money around eleven forty five in the night till twelve he withdrew money from all the accounts and then twelve o one again when the date change happened. 
new limit became available he withdrew money people were sleeping in their home morning they came to know that somebody is in fraud right now now let me give you a very non technical solution to solve this problem whenever i use an atm machine i put my pin wrong once first time so if the machine says no cash there is a problem reason is if the machine is genuine it will go to the server and check my pin and if pin doesn't match means it will ask me and prompt me that your pin is wrong it will not process any other thing whereas a machine which is counterfeit of a criminal does not have any means to go back to the server it will not check your pin and it will always say no cash so whenever you use an atm machine where you have any doubt or rather start doing this thing that whenever you are using any atm machine put your pin wrong once if machine says any other thing other than wrong pin that means the machine is wrong or there is a problem right so so these kind of non technical solutions i have explained in the book as well as i have given out problem statement which can be solved which people can try to solve can somebody uh, organizer read it for me fast and loud you have to read it fast and loud please sejal yes yeah, sir can you read it fast and loud for me okay sir i'll do it i couldn't believe that i could actually, actually understand what i was reading using the incredible power of the human mind according to research at cambridge university it doesn't matter it in what order the letters letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and the last letter be in the right place the rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without a problem this is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself but the world as a whole amazing huh yeah and i was and i always thought spelling was important right so you could read everything so if you now go back to the first slide when i told ognc what happens is you will read it in ongc if i send you a mail from gaurav@ognc.co.in you will never care that it is ognc you will always read it like ongc because your mind tells you so so what happens is see this is our intelligence when we talk about artificial what happened was 